Blessings upon you, friends. Thank you for breaking open the Word of God with me this Sunday, the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time, on the 26th of September. <laughs> See how that all kind of comes together? And we have a wonderful gospel tomorrow, though. Tomorrow is the great feast of St. Vincent de Paul. I can't wait. <laughs> and we have those of you who, uh, who offered you know, support for our Kenya school stuff. We got all your names in a basket. We're placing it on the altar for tomorrow's Mass. So thank you for that. Today, though, on this 26th Sunday, we got a great gospel from the ninth chapter of Mark. This is what it says. Jesus told them, if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. If your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with only one eye than to have two and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. It's kind of hard to respond. Praise to you, Lord when we hear a gospel, so tough to hear, like today talking about hell. Uh, we'll get there. But hey, I want to tell you, I was talking <clears throat> to my young nephew recently, <clears throat> and he said something, I don't know, <clears throat> made me laugh. And I responded by saying, you know, oh, LOL. And he looked at me funny and said, what? <laughs> and I said, LOL. And he asked me, what is it? L, L well? <laughs> I'm like, everybody knows what that is from texting. It means laugh out loud, LOL. He shrugged it off and said he's never heard it. <laughs> Young people. Jeez. A little while later in the conversation, I told him about a really great thing that happened to me. And he responded all excited and said, oh man, that is so lit. Let? I asked him. <laughs> He's like, no, lit, you know, like, great, awesome. I had no idea, but just to keep my dignity as an old man, I just laughed and said, oh, I didn't hear, oh, lit, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, um, I am so lit, <laughs> so, I don't know, but it got me thinking afterwards, you know, there's lots of terms and phrases that were used when I was growing up that people today have no idea. You know, because they're just not used anymore. They've fallen out of favor, if you will. Um, knuckle sandwich. Remember that? <laughs> Daddy-o. Burn rubber. Cruising for a bruising. <laughs> you know, sh put a sock in it. My nephew would be a sock in what? <laughs> But I think of that, folks, because in today's gospel today, Jesus is very clearly reminding us about something that's also fallen out of use and favor. Actions have consequences. Remember that? He tells us that there's a place of unquenchable fire, hell, Gehenna, for people who choose to live their life in sin. And it reminds me of another quote that we also don't hear much about anymore that says, if it's easy being a Christian, then you're probably not one. To live a virtuous life in a culture that says, do whatever you want. You're the most important. It's not easy, as we know. A society that reaffirms the ethos, you are number one. To stand up for a principle and what you know to be true 
at the risk of losing a friendship, that's quite demanding. Our inclination is just to let it go. But it's also the very heart of the spiritual life that we call Christianity. Acting on impulses and behavior that brings hurt to another, that's sinful. Living for oneself, making you number one, it's the very definition of sin. The word itself, S-I-N, I, is right in the center of it, me. But <laughs> there we go again. Another word we don't talk much about anymore that's kind of fallen out of favor, sin. It's what Jesus was talking about all over the gospel today. You know, we talk a lot about the love of God, and rightly so. But that God came for a reason and gave his life because of that very word we don't like to think of anymore, sin. At the Eucharistic prayer, every time we gather at church around the altar, what does Jesus say to us in his words? This is the chalice of my blood which will be poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus gave his life because he knew the effect of sin and what it can have on us and left unchecked where it will take us. Now, <laughs> folks, I'll be the first to admit it. I do not like talking about sin and punishment and the fires of hell any time at the pulpit here in church or otherwise. It's depressing and challenging and weirdly kind of feels, I don't know, old-fashioned. But it's Gospels like today that reminds me, like it or not, it's very real. That yes, actions do have consequences, both for good, but also for evil. I, I read somewhere that the greatest triumph of Satan has been the slow whittling away of people's belief or acknowledgement of hell. That we have a loving God who cares for us and would do nothing to harm us. How could he send anyone to hell? But of course, he doesn't. You send yourself. At the end of your life, God will give to you for eternity what you loved most in this life. You love yourself first and mostly, that's where you'll be for eternity with just yourself alone. Tomorrow, folks, we celebrate the feast day of a man who knew both those realities of sin and virtue. He began his life on a path that was clearly centered upon himself. But through the grace of God and his spirit open to his presence, Vincent de Paul began living his life for other in the footsteps of Jesus. And this, my friends, is when he was in his 30s. So, uh, you know, it uh, <laughs> gives me hope. <laughs> it broke his heart, Vincent, that he couldn't no longer visit his family, who he loved very dearly after being ordained a priest. But then again, it brings us back to this gospel today, where Jesus reminds us that to walk in his shoes and truly be the disciple we call ourselves can be quite demanding, as we know. I guess I'm blessed because I live in a house here in St. Louis with 17 other Vincentian priests. It's awful. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but 17 other brother priests 
And they remind me most every day that, Ron, you're not perfect. <laughs> Bless their hearts. <laughs> but it's true. Of course, I remind them the same thing. But it's true because, yeah, I'm not perfect. And I know that. I'm so far from that. But I also know that it's okay. Because perfection is not what Jesus ever asked from us. It's fidelity. It's the desire to be with him and for him and in him as we go through this crazy, wonderful thing we call life. And yes, while sin and the evil one is indeed very real and present, always luring us to itself, Jesus gave us a far more powerful force to overcome that, that darkness. He gave us himself, his precious blood. Our glorious God who comes to us and in us at every Eucharist comes to be among us where two or three are gathered in his name in selfless acts of charity and kindness during those moments we pause in our life and give him our hearts in prayer, our God minute prayer together, and so many other opportunities to feel and touch the divine. After church today, I'm going on a little mountain biking ride. Oh, into nature. Oh, I feel God so present there as well. And folks, that's what makes us Christian, not rules or rituals or certificates, but by how we live our lives in relationship with Jesus and one another. So today I'd like to leave you with two quotes from two different popes. The first, St. John Paul II. He said this, it's lovely. It is Jesus that you seek when you dream of happiness. He is waiting for you when nothing else you find satisfies. He is the beauty to which you are so attracted. I love that. He is the beauty to which we all are drawn. <laughs> and Pope Benedict, our second quote, he says, Christianity is not an intellectual system, a collection of dogmas or a set of rules. Christianity is an encounter with Jesus. It is a love story. It is a love story. So I leave you now, my friends, with a song that has also fallen out of favor and you don't hear much anymore. My nephew probably has never heard it, <laughs> but which kind of sums all this up for me. I'll leave you with that, but also with the blessing of Almighty God upon you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow for our great feast of St. Vincent de Paul. Thanks for being with us. Have a beautiful day. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And we'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Spread the news that God is in our land, and then.